Hello, and welcome to how NVIDIA Insight Graphics utilizes Qt to create powerful debugging and profiling tools for 3D graphics on ARM processors. My name is Aurelia Reese, and I'm the Director of Graphics Developer Tools at NVIDIA, where my role is to ensure that developers have the best experience developing their graphics applications as possible. Today, we're going to look at how we help developers create cutting-edge graphics using NVIDIA Insight Graphics on modern platforms like ARM. First, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to what NVIDIA Developer Tools mission is and how NVIDIA is pushing boundaries in computer graphics. Next, I'll explain how our tools are used by developers worldwide to debug, profile, and optimize their 3D graphics applications. After that, I'll show you an exciting, never-before-seen demonstration of our ray tracing tools running on an ARM dev kit. I'll then explain how Qt made all of this possible and how we took full advantage of all of Qt 6.2's features to create our tools. I'll finally wrap up with some final thoughts and hopefully you can stick around for a live Q&A session where I'll answer your questions. Let me start by telling you about a world-class organization. NVIDIA is world-renowned as a leader in computer graphics, AI, and data center solutions, and a large reason for that is due in part to the powerful ecosystem that we have created for developers. We have enabled cutting-edge 3D graphics thanks to the GeForce RTX line of GPUs that provide powerful computing ability and cutting-edge features like ray tracing. NVIDIA Developer Tools is an organization that spans multiple areas including compute, system software, and graphics. Our mission is to help developers to be as productive as possible by creating useful tools for gaming, workstation, automotive, and embedded systems. These tools are meant to help developers squeeze the most performance and graphical fidelity from NVIDIA GPUs. Ray tracing is a great example of a technology that few thought would achieve mass industry adoption, but is now available on most major gaming consoles and from every GPU hardware vendor. Of course, that wasn't always the case. Over 40 years ago, a single frame could take up to 40 minutes to render. At the time, Turner Witted jokingly proposed that a fleet of room-sized Cray supercomputers, each rendering a single pixel, could achieve real-time performance. Today, this is possible on a single NVIDIA GPU in real time. DXR was the industry's first accepted API for real-time ray tracing. Introduced running on a DGX2 workstation at GDC 2018, real-time ray tracing became available on a PC GPU through Turing Architecture GPUs. Today, you can get real-time ray tracing on the Ampere architecture-based RTX 3060 Ti at a very affordable price point. In 2020, the Kronos Group officially ratified and launched the Vulkan ray tracing extensions, providing real-time ray tracing to even more platforms and potential users. Today, games such as Doom Eternal take advantage of ray tracing to increase realism and immersion, and because of this, it's important that every developer become familiar with ray tracing to some extent. I'm not going to cover in-depth advanced ray tracing concepts like secondary bounces or algorithms like path tracing, but I recommend reading the free Ray Tracing Gems 2 for a great explanation. An area where NVIDIA has had a tremendous impact is in expanding the ability for developers to push the boundaries of computing. To deliver computation at the scale and complexity that developers need requires fast access to a large pool of memory and tight coupling between the CPU and GPU. Our commitment to utilizing ARM CPUs has helped us break through those barriers and move at the speed of light. Later in this presentation, I'll show you how we've expanded our tools to enrich that ecosystem with a ray tracing demo running on an NVIDIA Clara AGX developer kit. Let's take a brief look at how Insight Graphics helps developers debug and profile their applications. Development tools are meant to save you time and frustration, and one of the best ways to do that is to ensure that you have an efficient and effective workflow. What we recommend is to start by defining the problem. Is it a performance issue or something wrong with the rendering? If the issue is rendering related, Insight Graphics is the best tool for the job. We have many features to help resolve these kinds of issues, and we'll get into that in a bit. If it's performance, first identify if the problem is GPU or CPU related. This is a place where Insight Systems shines. If it turns out that the issue is GPU related, you can easily switch over to Insight Graphics and start doing your analysis there. After a few optimizations, you might move the needle in the opposite direction, and it's easy to go back to the other tool to solve new issues that might emerge. This analysis takes time and careful consideration to balance workloads between CPU and GPU. 
We're going to stick to Insight Graphics in this presentation, but I highly recommend you check out Insight Systems later. Insight Graphics is a debugger and profiler that is meant to help you improve productivity, ease development time, and help you to create high fidelity graphics with great frame rates. It supports advanced modern graphics features like mesh shaders, variable rate shading, DXR, Vulkan ray tracing, and more. The main purpose is to provide developers with full visibility of the GPU so you can make full use of its potential. Be it for fixing bugs or improving performance, you can use Insight Graphics to create a better experience for your users. It supports operating systems like Windows and Linux, x64 processors, and soon ARM processors as well. Modern graphics APIs like Vulkan and Direct3D12 are also supported, as is OpenGL. We support many features going back to the Pascal graphics architecture, but Insight Graphics especially shines with modern RTX GPUs that utilize the Turing architecture and Ampere architecture. 3D graphics APIs provide the mechanisms for you to load objects into GPU memory and then to specify when you want to draw them. We call these API events, and every 3D graphics scene is composed of many of these events. These events are straightforward to browse, and in addition, we give you a detailed view of what parameters were used for the event. For example, in Vulkan, to start ray tracing, you call the VK Command Trace Rays KHR event. In order for this event to work properly, you will have defined storage buffers, acceleration structures, shaders, and images and samplers that describe the 3D world. The API inspector allows you to see exactly what parameters were specified by the programmer. This is incredibly useful since missing even a few parameters here might result in incorrect rendering or no rendering at all. The Insight Graphics application is usually referred to as the host, which is the system that the main application client and UI are running on. To capture the state of a graphics application to analyze, you have to connect to what we call the target, which is the device you want to gather information from. In most cases, both are the same. For instance, when running on Windows and capturing a D3D12 application, it's likely that you're using the same computer. In certain situations, however, you want to run the host on your main development workstation and connect remotely to a target that is running something called an Insight Remote Monitor. This allows the host to communicate with the target in order to send back the application state. This versatility makes it possible to connect to a machine that doesn't support the host, isn't accessible, or that you need to have only the graphics application running on, without interference from other running processes. Graphics applications utilize resources like textures, render targets, shaders, and buffers to generate the scene. When a rendering artifact or bug appears, it's likely due to some misconfiguration of these resources. With Insight Graphics, you can visualize all of these resources using a built-in browser. You can sort by properties like resource size or format and see how many modifications occurred for that resource over the course of the frame. For example, let's say there was an object in your scene that was drawing without the correct texture. You can inspect the draw call, look at the associated resources, and determine if the reason is related to the geometry, the textures, or the shader that applies any material properties. Perhaps there were vertex attributes that were incorrectly loaded from the geometry file? The resource browser allows you to specify a memory structure definition to allow you to more easily inspect values. For instance, if you specified the vertices and normals correctly, but the texture coordinates were loaded incorrectly, you would be able to clearly identify that. Acceleration structures are especially important for ray tracing and deserve special attention to ensure that they are set up properly. To help with this, we provide a dedicated acceleration structure viewer that provides a plethora of information. Ray tracing is fundamental to raising the bar in computer graphics, and so features like this are instrumental in that. The acceleration structure viewer allows you to zoom directly to any top or bottom level acceleration structures instance by double clicking on the list to the left. In order to determine how many instances are overlapping, you just click the Instance Overlaps button, which brings up the Analysis dialog. The view also changes to colorize the excessively overlapping instances, allowing you to quickly hone in on the most important instances to improve. The same applies for instance sparsity, which might result in traversal that never actually intersects with geometry due to empty space. This is incredibly inefficient, and the analysis dialog allows you to zoom in onto the AABBs that should be modified to reduce their sparseness. When you need to improve your GPU performance, timing information is nice to have as it provides a picture of where you are over budget, but it doesn't necessarily tell you how to improve performance of a given work regime. With GPU Trace, you are able to see low-level metrics that map directly to GPU hardware. 
Metrics, which are also sometimes referred to as performance counters, are measurements taken for different parts of the GPU. These measurements help paint a picture of how well the GPU is performing. Similar to the gauges in a conventional car, these metrics help you determine if your engine, so to speak, is working at peak efficiency. There are hundreds of different metrics you can use to do this, so we try to curate a smaller list that encompasses the most significant causes of performance degradation. For example, the GPU has a number of hardware units that work at the lowest level to execute shader instructions efficiently. These might include the text unit, primitive engine, L1 cache, RT core, front end, as well as color ROP and ZROP. For a deeper understanding of the NVIDIA architecture and hardware units, check out the NVIDIA Ampere Architecture white paper on the NVIDIA website. Metrics values are different depending on what is being measured. In the same way that the engine vacuum gauge is not measuring the same thing as the RPM gauge, GPU performance metrics have different measurements. I won't cover all of them here, but keep in mind that some of these values you want to be low and some you want to be high. When considering a percentage value like throughputs, for instance, 100% is usually not desired as that implies that you are saturating that part of the graphics pipeline. We recognize that becoming a GPU expert that understands every performance metric requires a tremendous amount of time and training. We thought about how we could make this information more accessible and easier to interpret. That's when we came up with trace analysis. Trace analysis is a rule-based system that looks at the metrics saved in a GPU trace report and categorizes the work regimes associated with those metrics based on the likelihood of improving performance if those work regimes were optimized. In addition to providing the potential gain, we provide a description of the rule and recommendations on the steps you can take in your code to realize those gains. These recommendations come directly from NVIDIA DevTechs and are based on years of experience going through a similar performance triage process on dozens of major game titles. Similar to trace analysis, we wanted to find a straightforward way to visualize shader performance so that you know what you should be focusing your optimization efforts on. In general, profiling shader performance is an immense challenge that requires good intuition for what could be causing performance issues as well as a deep knowledge of the GPU in order to know how to fix those problems. Artists are constantly changing the game world and so being able to quickly and easily analyze a complex scene is paramount to understanding what to focus on. With the shader timing heat map, we're aiming to provide a way for you to quickly identify which areas of the scene you should be focusing on. The shader timing heat map will present you with the time spent per pixel in a shader, a heat map that provides a clear visualization of trouble hotspots and severity, correlation between hotspots and render targets. The shader timing heat map will be available soon for both DXR and Vulkan ray tracing. Now that you better understand what Insight Graphics is, let's have a look at how it works with a real-world ray tracing application. In order to demonstrate what's possible with RTX GPUs, NVIDIA decided to do something no one had ever done before, update a game that uses traditional rasterization to use a ray tracing algorithm called path tracing. Path tracing much more closely resembles how light works in reality by simulating how photons scatter around an environment before reaching our eyes. This allows for much more realistic graphics, especially for lighting phenomena that are much more difficult to achieve in rasterization, such as light bounce and reflections. Historically, from a performance perspective, path tracing has always been substantially more expensive than traditional rasterization. However, with the introduction of hardware accelerated ray tracing in the NVIDIA Turing and Ampere architectures, we challenged ourselves to implement this algorithm in real time. We chose to use the classic and beloved first-person shooter Quake 2 and updated it to work in 4K resolution with features like reflections, refractions, depth of field, and physically-based global illumination. With our DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling technology, we were able to maintain frame rates above 60 at 4K resolution on even the most modest NVIDIA GPUs. All of this work was open sourced and is available on GitHub, making it an excellent reference application for devs looking to create a modern real-time ray tracing application. The results are stunning, and here's a video showing it in action.
When developing graphics applications on ARM computers, the only way to connect using our tools before was through a remote target connection. This means that you need a separate computer to aid in your development. With Qt 6.2 now supporting ARM, we were able to very quickly port our host UI to a Clara AGX dev kit running an ARM CPU with a discrete GPU, the RTX 6000. Here's a demo showing Nsight graphics connecting to and debugging Quake 2 RTX. First, we launch, connect to the application, then capture the frame data. After finding the TraceRays API event, we can inspect the different values as well as visually examine the acceleration structures. We can then browse resources and profile the frame using the supported range profiler. In addition to standard frame debugging and frame profiling, we were able to get our low-level profiler GPU Trace working as well. Check it out! The GPU Trace report looks exactly as expected, with the heavily optimized QPainter implementation in Qt 6.2 providing beautifully drawn graphs of the performance metric values. Qt has been a phenomenal toolkit to work with. Let me tell you about some of the ways in which it helped us create our tools. NVIDIA DevTools has a number of different products under the Nsight umbrella, including Nsight Graphics, Nsight Compute, Nsight Systems, and Nsight DL Designer. In order to ensure that we reduce redundant effort and code duplication, we work closely together to create a shared foundation that can be leveraged for different use cases. Qt provides a large set of libraries for application development, and we use a large selection of those libraries in the composition of these tools. One of the primary interaction points with Qt is an application library we call AppLib that uses Qt and builds on top of it to make these facilities available to each of our tools. In addition, we built a large selection of custom UI primitives, such as timelines, memory views, source code editors, and more. These facilities are composed into each product and exposed through the different activities and workflows that each product provides. By plugging into a shared system, we can leverage code across multiple products and take advantage of a common foundation for evolving these tools in tandem. A major advantage of this is maintaining a similar look and feel across these fundamentally different but related tools. In the past, we had built our own docking system but it was majorly limited. Recently, we decided to switch to using KD Dock widgets from KDAP. This powerful docking system provides all of the docking primitives that we need in order to allow our users to customize their layouts as they please. Being able to leverage a well-tested, robust, 
an industrial strength docking system that is maintained by the expert QT developers at KDAB has been a tremendous boon for us and our users. Sorting and filtering are critical operations that our users need to do on a regular basis. Because of this, it's an especially performance sensitive operation that needs to feel smooth in UI even with thousands of entries. QTable views were paramount to providing that great user experience. To make things even faster, we cache results and set the sorting criteria first, then enable sorting. With such a diverse UI, composability and rapid iteration is incredibly important to Nsight graphics. Qt Chart helps us to quickly build charts thanks to its configurability and ease of use. Complex views like this one are often the central means by which a user navigates data. For cases like these, we wanted to be able to curate the experience to make that navigation as streamlined, quick, and effective as possible. For example, this timeline view has all of the operations you'd expect of a timeline, as well as considerations for domain-specific concerns, such as complex data-dependent tooltips, scrolling, zoom, and item selection. Graphics APIs are complex, and objects usually encompass many different resource types and parameters. To tie all this data together nicely, we took full advantage of Qt's layouts in order to create a UI that is easy to read and interact with. Testing is also incredibly important, and we utilize a test farm to ensure that our code is as solid as possible. To test the UI, we use Qt Test for unit testing, as well as FrogLogic's Squish for testing on code commits. Moving to Qt 6 has yielded some great benefits. While we've removed deprecated methods as we advanced in the Qt 5.x line, we still had a large amount of porting to do to address the changes that Qt 6 required. In nearly all cases, the API improvements were substantially clearer than older code. Switching to Qt 6 is what enabled our ability to move to ARM, and we couldn't be happier at how easy it was to get this new functionality. We're also excited by the high DPI improvements, as this has been a pain point for our users who are upgrading to 4K and above monitors, or using a multi-monitor system with different DPI values. Our engineers appreciate the C++17 support, and it has motivated us to keep our tool chains up to date and future facing. Finally, being on Qt 6 means that we can take advantage of the maintenance, security updates, and general improvements to come. The effort to get our code base up to Qt 6 has been a wise investment in keeping our tools modern, secure, and agile. Let's wrap things up with some conclusions. NVIDIA empowers developers to create incredible 3D graphics applications through powerful tools. Qt allows for rapid development using a huge library of useful plugins and widgets. NVIDIA successfully uses Qt for multiple products using a shared foundation. I'd like to give a special shout out to the incredible graphics developer tools team that has worked so hard to create such an amazing tool. Specifically, thanks to JC Liang and his team for getting our codebase up and running on ARM with Qt 6.2. Thanks to Dan Price for helping to explain how we leverage Qt. Thanks to Mark Messick for his help in porting AppLib, our UI foundation, to Qt 6.2. Thanks to KDAB for their help with KD Doc widgets. And thank you so much to everyone at Qt for their incredible support and for inviting me to speak here today. The NVIDIA Developer Tools team has a lot of great things to accomplish and is looking to grow. If you'd like to join an amazing team that does important work for a company that cares deeply about its employees, be sure to check out the careers page on the NVIDIA website. I'll stick around for the next 30 minutes in the speaker's lounge. If you have any questions, feel free to join me there. Thank you so much for watching this session. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the Q&A or reach out by using the email provided here.